Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Sorry, sir. I still haven't heard back from the database people. Try calling again later. Is there anything else I can do for you? Just a second, officer. Sylvie Malaika on the line for you, officer. Yes. Hello? Oh, great. What else do you need, detective? No, absolutely not. That came so fast, you can't but wonder what else she would be good at. Baseball? Ring a bell quiz shows? Catching keys in the air? Petting an angry cat? You hear the call breaking up on the other end of the radio, and then the already familiar voice. Anything else I can help you with, officer? 57, over and out. In the cabin, you see a set of steering levers, a radio on a hook, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. A thin man is smoking below an exhaust hood, occasionally sipping from his mug. This must be the Whirling's cook. As you step in, he nods toward the table and says something in a completely foreign language. The only words you can make out are Garanzi and Kubek. Okay. It's definitely not his name. Whatever you do, please don't call him Garanzi Quebec. Please, it's not funny. The man puts his cup down and replies something, his left hand drawing arcs in the air. He looks up at you, then looks away quickly, shrugging and muttering something to himself. Shrugging is an international sign for, no, I don't know what's behind that door. The mention of Manana gets his attention. He smiles and delivers a whole slew of unfamiliar words and lively gestures. Then he falls silent again. Their friends? The man says a couple of sentences in that strange language of his and then seems to wait for you to speak. I'm pretty sure he asked you a question. He doesn't know your language. You can just say something cool in return. Hmm. Porsche need more vodka? Okay, so it's vodka that keeps the men happy and in good spirits. Clever move by the Union. Vodka Borscht! I love it, Bratan! Turn it the fuck up and then ask for some yourself! Turning it up seems like a dangerous idea, honestly. The place is a powder keg. The cook gives you a long, disappointed look, then turns the stove off and seems to wait for you to speak. He smiles and bangs his ladle against each of his pots in turn. It's almost like music, especially with the sounds of assorted dishes boiling and simmering on the stove. Let me handle this. 
You seem a little different today. Less hospitable. You are far from home, Lieutenant. This isn't a district known for its love of self-proclaimed militiamen. That's right. I'm not a gardener. I'm a legal counselor for the Dock Workers Union. Not a muscle moves in her face, but her eyes trace yours, stern and perceptive. You are looking for Titus Hardy? who you think has information on a murder the RCM is investigating. You want to interview him. That's Titus. Talk to him, but know this. I'll be keeping an eye on you. No strong arming, nothing official. The district of Martinez does not recognize your authority to make arrests. It doesn't matter if you recognize our authority. We will make an arrest if we have to. She says nothing. Her glare speaks for her. Could this be the Miss Beaufort that Easy Leo mentioned? The one Mr. Everard sent to law school? I suggest not wasting time on trivial pleasantries and focusing on why you are actually here. Even though she has excellent control over herself, something moved behind her eyes in the way she stands. In her face. You are not here to chat up the legal counsel. You are here to question these men. Like I already told you, I'm a legal counselor. Do you have hearing problems? What you want is of no significance, officer. Don't test your authority. In Martinez, you are no one. Aggressive, you make your living enforcing violence. These people are just dock workers. Just dock workers? Do dock workers spy on the police? We let you off easy, miss. Don't think it will happen again. We've talked to Everard Claire. We know who these men are. The Union's militant wing. Listen, you moral intern lackeys. You're a mob enforcing the unlawful privatization of Revishal. Twenty fat men in the Occident are stealing it all. And you're their bodyguards. Fuck yeah. So ask what you came to ask, or get back to your commanders. No one is emotional here. Do your job. Ask your questions, then leave. Behind the dock workers, a ceiling height window. The hawthorn branches scrape the glass like bony fingers. There's a little slide panel up there to let some air in. No need to open it in spring. It's still too cold outside. Nothing, just black tangles like the hair of an old woman, motionless. The wind in the yard doesn't reach the hawthorn, nor does the light come in from this window. This is where you say you're bed. Detective. Hey, hey dipshit. You hard of hearing or something? The boss man's talking to you. What, is he fucking kidding? This guy high or something? Hey asshole, up here. We're talking to you. We are looking for Titus Hardy. Wow, the RCM sent us some big dick cops. Real big dick cops. Look at them, reckless, swinging in the wind. Yeah, look at the big dick on that cop. Can't tell a dick that big what to do. Must be something in the water in Jamra. Yeah, gave them real nice big dicks. Yeah. <clears throat> Anyways, 
You might want to start asking your questions now. It's not going to get better than this. These guys are so macho, they're ready to confess to first-degree murder. Ask if it was them. Do a head count first. Connect these men to the tracks you saw in the yard. Chances are they're going to match. Starting from the right. Boot size, 44. Blonde man, in his 30s. Overbearingly masculine. Sitting on his right. Standard working boots. Size, 45 or 46. Eldest in the room. Probably mid-50s. Smoker. Quiet. Across, at the other table. Hobnailed working boots. Size, 43. Gang tattoos. Mesk or Sarah Maritzian. In his late 30s, early 40s. A symmetric burn on his neck, resembling the letters Loss Loss. Has he tried to burn it off? Leave that life behind? And then, standard working boot. Steel reinforced toes. Size 46. The big dick. Wide at the shoulders and lean at the hips. Rugby cap. Fingerless gloves. And numerous scars. A little under 40. The emblem on his vest says Rowan Club. A little patch below it reads T. Hardy, Captain. In the far corner, standard working boot, steel reinforced toes, size 44. 40 something, non alcoholic beverage in hand. You squint. Is that a plectrum? On his neck. Forget it. It's not important. Let's call this one the musician. Size 41, with the light step. Not a child, after all. An older man with a rat face, mean, watery eyes, and two front teeth missing. In the middle, heaving and wheezing. Big guy, boot size 46, deep marks. Probably carried the victim over. He alone is 130 kilos. Add the man in armor, and you could easily exceed 220. In conclusion, these seven are the actors on the crime scene. The footprints were theirs, but there's a discrepancy. Exactly, the missing lady driver who was running the drug trade. Does it mean the Hardy Boys are involved in the drug trade as well? Maybe, but hey. You've stood there for about four seconds, not saying anything. Now is a good time to hit them with questions. Where's the eighth Hardy? The fuck is with you, fella? What are you talking about, madman? There's no eighth hardy boy. There's seven of us and we're all here. Or what? You want to be the eighth hardy boy? We ain't hiring. Actually, boss, we've been talking and we think she could maybe... This person Glenn wants to hire, he really respects her. She? So there's an eighth hardy and it's a hardy girl? Who might it be? Elizabeth? The gardener? Shut the fuck up, Glenn! I do the talking here. Now what the fuck do you want, cop? It has to be good, if he won't let you pursue it. Looks like the lieutenant thinks so, too. So, let me get this straight. There is an ace hardy boy. It's a she, and you don't like us talking about her? That's right. We're not talking about this. This is a private hardy boys matter. Nothing to do with your shit. End. You're not cops here. Don't go digging around if you don't want a bullet in the back of your head. I'm watching you. Good. We are all watching each other. 
Officer, your question. There's no point in pushing it further, he thinks. This is already a victory. We'll learn more about this eighth hardy sooner or later. Like hell you have. There is no local drug trade. This place is as clean as a rifle. Go back to Jamrock and ask the local junkies how clean your streets are in precinct 41 kilos. We'll do that. In the meantime, did you know that there's an abandoned lorry at the intersection that was used to move raw ingredients for drugs from Terminal B to Jamrock? The person driving it was present at the hanging. It was one of you. We've connected the footprint. Detective, do you want to deliver the coup de grace? The thought forms in your head, like a lightning strike branching in the sky. No, the thunder is his. Leave it to the lieutenant. Thank you. You're right, Titus. There is no local drug trade, because it's all controlled by you. You're the drug trade. That's a mighty interesting theory. I guess that's what you would need to do, theoretically. A big, strong, state-run monopoly would outcompete the runs on the street. Yeah, man. Theoretically, that's what you would do. To get rid of the gangs, the dealers, even some of the junkies. You would need good, trustworthy people to take their place, of course. Hardy men to run such a monopoly. For the good of the community, of course. No, there aren't. Some little shit and his dad are doing speed. Who fucking who? The stuff's probably from Jamrock. Little shit. That's Kuno in the yard. Whatever you've seen is peanuts. Look at the big picture, man. The place is a paradise. And all thanks to Hardy Boys. Theoretically, of course. We're just talking politics here. My answer to your drug accusation is... How dare you? Go fuck yourself. Not quite yet, Mr. Hardy. There were eight sets of prints on the crime scene. There are only seven Hardy Boys here. My answer is... Fuck off. Mind your own business. There is no eighth Hardy. I run this goddamn scene. Finally, you got something out of him. This could prove useful in the future. And here we go. Back to the usual. I know, I know! Fatty walked on all fours. He's so fucking fat, he left two sets of footprints. <laughs> Despite everything, the little man is quick on his feet. Go fuck your mom, Dennis. That's more like it, boys. You heard him. It was Angus on all fours. Anything else you need to know? So, you're not just here to swing your big dick. You're here for the pretty boy. Real looker, that one. Stinks like shit, too. They love him, boss. Spend all day digging around in there. Can't get enough of that pretty boy smell. Funny. But my partner and I have a serious matter to discuss with you. Ebrar? And what did he tell you? That we killed him? That we took a cargo belt from the harbor, went out back, and used it to hang him. Because we did. All of us together. I hope he told the story straight. I hope he told it well. There's a catch hidden somewhere. He didn't confess so that you could take them all away. It's too simple. There is no catch. These seven honest men have all equally come forth to tell you what happened, so that you don't waste any more of your time. All seven together. They're diluting responsibility. It's an anti-arrest tactic. 
How many people have you sent to the Shays? Ever felt remorse for them? Shays Electrique is the method of capital punishment in Revachon under the coalition. During the suzerain's reign, it used to be the firing squad. Or send them to reunion to rot. For 20 years. For life. The River Esperance Correctional Facility, a military prison run by the coalition, dubbed Reunion by the inmates. The origin of the name is unknown. But you see, a law, lawman, is something people agree upon. And here in Martinez, we agreed that this man had to die. Are you deaf? There will be no singling anyone out. You can't arrest a hardy boy without arresting all hardy boys. Do you think you could do that? Do you think you could arrest them all? A trick question. Don't let her lead the conversation. <laughs> Who do you fucking think does? <laughs> Theo's a great guy, a, a great guy, but come on. Titus Hardy runs the Hardy Boys. That's why we're called the Hardy Boys, genius. I think you got your answer, Mr. Law. Yes, there are some administrative differences. But on that night, they all acted as one man. You don't have to keep answering his questions. I know, Lizzie. Relax. We killed him last Sunday night. Seemed like a good way to end the week. Known him? We don't associate with scum like that, asshole. Yeah! Who do you think we are? Quiet. He came around about three weeks ago when that Pines cow first sailed into town. Happy? By the Pines Cow, you mean Joyce Messier, the representative for White Pines? The same company you are striking against? No. I mean the Pines Cow. The stupid ass cow they sent in to fuck us over. But you know what? This is where he tries to sow discord between you two. Because he knows the company is responsible for bringing the mercenaries into town. Why don't you ask her about the pretty boy? I'm sure she has interesting things to say when you ask her hard enough. That's enough insinuation for today, Titus. Officer, your interview is drawing to an end. Don't waste your last questions. Why? Because he was worthless mercenary scum. And he stepped out alive in my town. And he stepped out of line. What kind of mercenary? The kind that shows up when you start a strike. The experienced kind, too. Had Kohoi and Semenin written all over him. Ex Oranese Special Forces. A live grenade! Right here in our bar! This one has a special gripe with him coming here. I can't prove it. But I know he was sent by the Wild Pines. They hire merc shit like that. Story of every strike from here to Samara. Cause one night, he walked straight up to the mic and said, I'm on her knees, goddamn special forces, and I'm gonna fuck you all. Really? Yeah, really. Had a gin and tonic up there, sang some r and paratrooper song, and said he's gonna fuck everyone. We couldn't believe it either. But he fucking did, right there, like some kind of animal. This is a serious violation of the karaoke code. Wrong. He harassed women, raped one, harassed workers, threatened to kill some as a warning. From rape to harassment 
to threats of violence. Why the strange de-escalation? He regrets mentioning it. Hopes you didn't notice. To kill us all, if we don't open the gates, if we don't let the scabs in, if we don't bend over. And that was before he started coming here. Yeah, he said it was his favorite joint now. Started to come in here every night. Drinking, grabbing girls, grab one of ours mid-karaoke, right there on the stage. He grabbed someone? Yeah, this girl's on the mic, a beautiful girl, young. Gets into the second verse of Love a Lake, the fucker grabs her legs, starts screaming. Show me your cunt, why don't you show me your cunt? Then, he gets knocked on the head with a wine bottle, doesn't even fall down. Aren't you fucking listening? My man is talking to you. He took care of it. They got the girl out before anything else could happen. Yeah, me and Eugene got her out. Aren't you fucking listening? Seems like they don't want to talk about that rape Titus mentioned. Why not? This is a serious allegation. Make them talk about it. No, you're not getting a name. That's a Martinez matter, and I'm not discussing it with you clowns. There's nothing you can do for now. He's stonewalling you. We hanged him up by his neck until he got real still. Wasn't that obvious, copper? Didn't they teach you anything at the cop school, idiot? The autopsy showed there were no ligature marks. His hands were not tied. Can you explain that? The lieutenant goes in for the leg sweep. Titus does not see it coming. Um, we... <sighs> Look, I'm not gonna play 20 questions with you, capo. I'll say it again. We killed him. Yeah, I knocked him out. Came up behind him and clapped him in the back of the head. He went down like a sack of sun. That's right, lawman. And then we hang the fuck. Make them a bit more uncomfortable first. Then see if it all adds up. My fucking elbow copper. Summer unboxing style. Right fucking here. Eugene already told you that the fuck had started coming to our bar. Yeah, man, weren't you listening? Titus is solid as a rock, and so are a few others. But Alain, who looks like he might be Titus's right-hand man, the least antsy of the bunch, definitely not his first time being questioned by the police. This little rat-faced fellow is solid, too. Always fidgety, yes, but no change there. Him neither. Mostly keeps to his tomato juice, or whatever he's got there. <laughs> no? Of course he's having trouble breathing. Just look at how fucking fat he is. <laughs> Fuck off, Shanky. Angus is a powerful guy. All muscle. Keep your eye on this powerful guy. Sooner or later, he's going to break like a piece of twig. And fuck you too, copper. Picking on Angus like this. We're done with this schoolyard shit. And just so you know, he doesn't have trouble breathing. His all-muscle comment wasn't sarcastic. He's genuinely trying to look out for Angus. This one is a stone wall. You won't get more out of them about the night of the murder. Not yet. Like what, copper? Yeah, lawman. 
Why don't you? It's almost an anthropological sight, watching him try to assert dominance over you. Not in the arresting mood? A fearful readiness, like an electrical charge, raises hairs in the room. By your side, the lieutenant keeps his hand away from his holster. You hear the nylon of his coat hiss as he steps closer. Easy. Walk back from the provocation. They're armed, and they outnumber us. The lieutenant tries to establish eye contact with you. While the little rat-faced man reaches into his sleeve, there's a knife in there. Some of the others reach for their belts. Their eyes are light. Wise move. You made the right choice there. Now make another one, and get the fuck out of our booth. We're not gonna do this again. Nothing. Your investigation here is done. Leave Martinez, go back to your stations where you belong. I think we're going to stick around, thanks. Some things don't add up here, Titus. I've done this job for long enough to know that people don't just confess to first-degree murder. Even if it is a group responsibility, we're going to look into this. Good luck with that. You've heard everything a rent-a-cop is gonna hear from us, real law officials. You're lucky you didn't get a beaten. Rent-a-cop? So that's what this is about. He doesn't see you as his equals. It's you again. What is it? Again. Just get the dead guy's autograph, since you're his biggest fan. <laughs> Good one, Titus! Huh? There was a bullet in the dead man's brain. Why was it there if you hanged him? How the fuck do I know? Anyone could have shot him. Target practice, maybe. This line of questioning is over. You got the cause of death already? Hanging. If there's any post-mortem trauma, it's your problem. This will not turn into a cross-examination. This was a good move. Also, notice how Titus doesn't like her much. Especially when she's calling the shots. About fucking time. You still on about that bullet? A bullet in a hangman's head. You're right, Copper. That is mighty curious. Indeed, mighty. How did it get there? Well, there are so many bullets in the world, and so many heads. <sighs> I guess it's only logical. At some point, one of them bullets had to end up in one of them heads. It's bound to happen again, you know? Just statistically speaking, of course. Wow! He's 
got it in a real evidence bag and all. Why don't you go home and log it into evidence? These men have told you what happened. You know what I think? I think he was shot in the head as a kid. And his brain grew around the bullet. Around the bullet, man. That's a good one. They're only pretending to enjoy this. Beneath the act, they don't like you knowing this. Shit! I probably did shoot him. I was drunk last night. You guys know me when I'm drunk. Yeah, Glenn likes to shoot his guns when he's drunk. Better hope he stays sober. No, he meant before he was hanged. Did you shoot him before you hanged him? Before? After? During? This is getting ridiculous. They told you what happened. Stop wasting your time. Never been worried in my life, lawman. It's not like you blew it wide open, but there's a little crack in there, somewhere. Establish authority, yes. Authority. Feverish thoughts race through your mind. Stop shitting your pants. You don't need to know, all right? We took care of it. The law handled it, all right? Yeah. Aren't you listening? It's done. Finito. For God's sake, stop shouting! Stop breaking things in my establishment! Stop provoking those oafs! Sounds like someone's damn broke. They're not going to give you anything, can't you see? I can't have a police interrogation in here. People are trying to eat. Of course it concerns me if you make this kind of... Easy, babes. What is this? I can't have a slap fight in my bar. It's embarrassing. Uh -huh. We are deep, deep in fast territory. We need to cool off and re-engage later. Everyone can see you picked some wrong options. Next time you have to come up with better things to say. It's you again. What is it? Oh. So you went and talked to my mommy, and now she's making me play with you. Is that it, lawman? And what's gonna happen if we don't? You're gonna go and tell on us? You gonna let him talk to me like that, Titus? Let's see. <laughs> yeah, I guess I am, you big pussy. The old man sent word you'd be around again. That's the reason I'm being so forthcoming with you. Don't wear it out. But having Everard back you up like that did seem to have some effect. Yeah. By friends, you mean his squad mates from Cronell. Wouldn't want to beat up his grandma. Nervous snickering. There's a rush of adrenaline present. This is what happens if you take the law into your own hands. Other people start doing it too. Let them come. The Hardy boys are right fucking here. You heard the man. Right here. We're armed. We got the whole district behind us. And Glenn. Glenn is fucking crazy. Yeah. I will oil it, Martin Machine. The mood is on the rise. They're feeling confident, ready to punch out the whole Merc platoon. The fuck is that supposed to mean? We're not bees. We're men. We're socialists. Easy, E. He's trying to phase you. What are you trying to do? Scare my men? <laughs> so are the local gangs. 
the fucking Barmy Army, and the Madre Scum. You been out there? Seen any around? Yeah. Where are they now, huh? Send back to Madre in an airtight cargo crate. These people are trained military professionals. Special forces, as you said. They're not a gang or Barmy Army. No, they're not. They're uncoordinated and drunk. We know more about them than you think. We got weapons of our own. We got Ester 50s, Zilagars. Glenn's got a knock cannon at home. I guess we're gonna see, aren't we? That was an unsure phrasing. Right about what? That a 50 caliber bullet goes through shit? Yeah, I am. Big fucking surprise. They hire psycho scum, arm them to the teeth and let them loose in the city. What do you think is gonna happen? He's really prepped himself up for this. He has to, to keep the fear in check. What do you mean, okay? No, they won't. Get out of here with your negative energy. All he means is that the situation is serious. No wonder you cops get shot to shit every day. Can't go to war with an attitude like that. As you look around this room full of sweaty men, swearing, drinking, spitting out tobacco, does this look familiar? You believe the place was called Precinct 41. It was also filled with almost exclusively men, sitting on desks, talking shit and wasting time. Huh? You got a problem with beer now? Not quite there yet. Push on. Speak for yourself, buddy. We've been giving a shit for 10 years. Martinez was a dump before we put this outfit together. They don't know, man. They weren't here. We had three shootings a week, kids dead, fucking graffito everywhere. You cops haven't shown up since the 30s. Congratulations on the graffito removal. All I see is you sitting around talking about Monica's titties while there's a rape victim. So what? What do you want from me? We took care of that fuck. Don't let him drink that. One more push. Quick. Just don't antagonize him. You have this already. Titus? She stops mid-sentence. That's it. You got him. He's going to give it up. But on his terms. You want to talk to her, cop? Fine. I'm gonna let you talk to her. But you treat her with respect. If you don't, if you question her, harass her. A freight train of pain, buddy. What is her name? Glacia. I'm on you. She's staying here at the worrying rags. A real pretty one. Silvery jumpsuit. Blonde. That's I'm on you. With an O. You. Shit. The girl. The girl upstairs? That can't be her. Remember what you said to her? You told her you want to have... Oh, it's her! It's definitely her! It's Miss Oranje, disco dancer! Sure. Why not? You've probably seen her around. You inexplicably add cool after the victim's name, with your eyes bulging like some wild beast. Your fingers are fidgeting and sweat starts forming on your brow as Titus looks at you oddly. I don't understand what's so cool here. Nothing. We just have a few more questions. Then we'll be on our way. It sounds like you're having a heart attack. Whatever you said, 
It couldn't have been that bad. Please relax. Whatever you do, do not tell him you know her. That would sound off, calm, normal. Try to forget this little hiccup. Relationship? There was no fucking relationship. He raped her. That's their relationship. Something is off here. His anger is possessive. It was like that karaoke incident all over again. Or like some of the other girls he was harassing. Okay, enough. All of this is irrelevant to your stated investigation. He did it before we killed him. He's not going to do it again. So what does it matter? It would help if we establish a timeline. All right. Two weeks, maybe? I don't know. I need another beer. Here you go, boss. I know her. How well do you know her? A small twitch in the corner of Kim's mouth. He has a hunch about what knowing means. Well enough, copper. We party. She's been here for a few months. You mean Revachol? Nah. Our Miss Aranye disco dancer is an immigrant or a drifter of some sort. Been staying over here over the winter. Don't you give her any more trouble. She's just had some bad luck, that's all. Shut up, Angie. She doesn't need your help. Titus gives them both a look. They fall silent. What's with all the silences? It's like these guys don't know how to feel about this. You should keep picking at it. What do you think I meant? Yes, yes, and no. Got something to say about it? No, we just fucked. That's all. I'm not gonna give you any details if that's what you're after. So put your dick away. He really went out of his way to seem comfortable with this topic. That's all you're gonna get for now. Remember what I said. Freight train of pain. Officer, what was that? Yes. Yes. It's not nothing. You were coming apart at the seams. Do you know the assault victim? Is there something I should know before we talk to her? Whatever you do, don't say the first thing. Understood. You were not in good shape on Monday. Okay, that's manageable. Understood. Mm -hmm. What else did you do? We'll be all right, officer. This is nothing. You feel fortified by his assurance. It's going to be all right. Is it, though? Nothing? You're still in for a bumpy ride here. Try not to mess it up. I've got nothing to say to you. Why are you wasting your time? I am not. You could be Liz. You could be anything. You could even be a model. Even a mod? Glenn, I went to law school. I am an attorney. He's right. With a face like that, she could be on the cover of Le Debutante International. So fucking what? Lots of models are actually really smart people, fuckwad. No, Glenn. They aren't. This didn't change her opinion of you. It's not her. She's not a hardy girl. Definitely. <laughs> 